are not part of that 60 plus percentage of minutes at Tyberry Brooks Barnheiser are a uh, welcome back guys coach Collins great to to see you as well you guys made history last year second straight NCAA attorney appearance I've been asking this of a lot of teams who had memorable seasons a year ago but before we move forward think about the memories of last year and and what stood out to each one of you and Ty I can start with you yeah uh thanks Dave I would say the biggest obviously memory that that pops to mind was beating Purdue at home uh, it was just such a great time, and and um, it kind of really gave us a, a even more of a push through the rest of the season. How about for you, Brooks? Yeah, I think for me it was just I, I think after that FAU game and kind of even stepping on the court against UConn, uh, kind of see where our programs came, and uh, kind of just sharing that with these guys. I think it's been like meant the world to all of us. Chris, I just think the camaraderie of the group. You know, I mean, we had some great wins. Obviously, the home, you know, Welsh Ryan, what it's become, the atmosphere in there, the. You know, beating an Illinois, beating a Purdue, a Michigan State, you know, seeing kind of where we've come from in, in the past and seeing where it is now is really fun. But watching these guys grow together, you know, the group we've had, obviously Boo, Ryan, but then these six guys who are back that played a lot last year to see the way they came together, their fight, their commitment. Uh, as a coach, those are the things you remember the most. I do want to ask each one of you before we get going here. I know you've each had a little bit of an injury issue here in the off season, so kind of well, Ty, yours was during the year last year, but Brooks, kind of bring us up to date on where you are in terms of, of getting back on the court. Yeah, I'm progressing. You know, I kind of tweaked my foot uh, before our foreign tour, but I'm progressing, and uh, I can't wait to get back out there with the guys. All right, how about you, Ty? I'm feeling great. Uh, I've started practicing with the guys and um, running good, jumping good, feeling good. Um, so I'm excited to be back for November 4th. Do, do you have a Do you have a time frame, Brooks, as to when you think you'll be back out there? Yeah, I should be back November 4th. So I can't wait to get out there. That's, 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 that's my goal. <laughs> you'll so, be yeah. playing in the I'll be playing, areas. yeah. When the ball tips, I'll be out there. <laughs> that's what you're saying. I, I know what motivated you guys last year when you, when you were up here. Um, we were talking about hey, we want to show that last year wasn't a fluke, right? That was that was kind of your big mantra, Chris, and that we can do this again, that we can become a consistent program, and, and you guys did that. So what motivates you this year? What What's... Yeah, I what, think what's really cool about our program is we're a chip-on-our-shoulder type of program. You know, most of the guys on our team didn't have a whole lot of Big Ten offers. Um, I've always kind of carried my own chip, you know, from growing up as a famous athlete's son and having to live in that shadow. I've always carried that motivation. I know these guys do. You know, you look at our team, a Nick Martinelli, a Matthew Nickerson, a Brooks Barnheiser, a Boo Booey. You know, people in our league didn't think they were good enough. You know, so all they do is they come and, and they've win. And we don't really care how we're viewed. You know, we, we believe in ourselves. You know, we, we laugh. We got picked at the bottom of the league again, again this year yeah. with, the, with the most returning players. <laughs> so I told the guys, I guess Boo and Langborg won all the games. You know, that's what everybody thinks of us. So we'll, we'll be motivated. Like, we got chip on our shoulder, guys. We're, we're a gritty blue-collar team and a program. That's what we are. We know our formula. Um, we're excited to compete. And the great thing about basketball is the preseason prognostications don't really matter. You, you get to go out there and actually play the games. They have not been particularly <laughs> accurate when it comes to Northwestern the last couple of years. I do think it's it's fair to point that out. Brooks, you made the preseason all-conference team. For someone who was, as Coach Collins said, not all that heavily recruited, what, what does that mean to be seen as one of the 10 best players in this league? Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, just to be up there with the kind of caliber of guys and the prestige of this conference, like it just is a really a blessing. And like Coach said, like um, I think a lot of guys on our team didn't really have other Big Ten offers, but Coach is the one that believed in me. So now to kind of be that caliber player and to play for Coach and – kind of lead this team my senior year, it means the world to me, so I can't wait to go out there and do it. Now, Ty's down here saying, I had a couple other Big Ten offers. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was a lot of we were. Yeah. He's not one of those. Yeah, like, he's, a, yeah, he's a fat and happy he's, guy. Yeah, he's a prima donna. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, Ty, with, with you with the injury last year, I mean, it was it was really tough to see you. Obviously, I had a couple of your games afterwards and, and to see you off on the side and, and not be able to, to participate with the guys. How challenging was it to kind of watch that season unfold and, and to not be able to be a part of it? I mean, yeah, it, it was hard, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I just wanted to be a good teammate and make sure that I was there for, for my guys. And, and being a more of a vocal leader on the sidelines um, is something that I really uh, progressed uh, towards the end of the season and, and that I'm definitely going to carry on in, into this season as well. well. Let's talk a little bit about leadership, and that is something that Boo had in spades, oh, right, no. and became one of the best leaders that you've ever had. Ryan Langborg 
was exceptional last year and, and once again showed us why he's a great NCAA tournament player. So tell me about the leadership. Tell me how these yeah. guys lead and, and who else you have on this team that, that can step into that void. Yeah, I, I think having a lot of veteran guys is, is going to help. You know, we're a, we're a program that's going to try to make our, our mark with continuity, with, you know, the culture of coming in, learning, learning from the older guys. And then when they leave, it's time to carry that mantle. And you saw that with Brooks in particular, you know, two year, you know, three year when he was a sophomore, it was Chase and Boo. You know, we lost Chase Audige. He stepped in, kind of took on even more of a role. Now Boo's leaving, and, and it's his time as a senior leader to really step up. Ty, same way. You know, Ty last year took a huge jump and became, you know, one of the better shooters and leaders and energy guys in the Big Ten. And these two guys have done a great job. They complement each other really well with their personalities, their leadership. Matthew Nicholson, you know, he's, as he was younger, he didn't say a whole lot. Now you hear his voice more, you know, someone who's a three-year starter at the center position. So those three guys in particular, I'm really leaning on them. You know, they've they've been key components to our success these last two years, and, and we're going to lean heavily on their leadership this year. What can you guys tell us about the point guard spot? Give me a little insight. And I know Jalen Leach comes in and, and is going to probably get that ball on, on opening night. Give us a little bit in, insight into his game. Yeah, I think the one thing that me and Ty have been talking about it, a uh, really cool thing about our team is we got a lot of interchangeable pieces and a lot of versatile players. So um, whether who gets the rebound and brings it up and stuff like that, like still kind of like working that out in these practices. But I definitely think it'll be kind of a new look, but I can't wait to get out there. I think it'll be a beautiful brand of basketball. Ty. Yeah, um, I agree. I totally think we have just a whole bunch of versatile players and, and guys who can, you know, um, handle it, but also, you know, um, complement complement each other well. Um, and I think Jalen does a good job of coming off screens, making the right reads, and um, so it'll be fun to play off him. You guys took a foreign trip this summer, and I know you guys didn't play, and Matt Nicholson didn't play either. And so when you and I talked, you said. It gave us an opportunity right. to see some of these other guys and to, to give them right. heavy minutes. So who are some of the players who stood out on that trip that perhaps weren't big key cogs last year? Well, someone who was who became a key cog, but we need to have a big role this year, Nick Martinelli. You know, Nick came in when Ty got hurt. He became a double-figure scorer last year. We expect him now as a junior uh, to consistently be a starter, be a double-figure guy. He's got such a unique game, uh, but he gets it done, you know, and he's a competitive guy, a terrific player, um, certainly working in the transfers. You mentioned Jalen Lee, Keenan Fitzmorris, who's a seven-footer out of Stony Brook coming in. And then uh, our young guys, our two freshmen, you know, to give them an opportunity. Not often do freshmen get a chance to get some games, yeah. you know, before coming in, but both K.J. Wyndham and, and Angelo Shervino, uh, two guys that have a lot of talent, but they have some veterans they can they can learn from. But expecting both of those guys to have key roles as well. Yeah. Uh, to to what extent you know depth was an issue last year. I mean, even before mm -hmm. you know Ty got hurt, before Mac got hurt, you were getting as few minutes as almost anyone in the country off your bench. To what extent can those guys be contributors right away? Like can can Wyndham and Shervino be? players who play in, in I hope so games yeah year. I mean to be determined right I mean you, you don't really know until you get out there um, you know another guy Justin Mullins you know is another guy who didn't play a whole lot last year but we have high hopes for he's 6'5 athletic can do a lot of different things I think those three guys are three in particular that you really look to and say like they can add to our depth they're athletes they're skilled they can put the ball in the basket versatile defenders you know we feel Luke Hunger you know another guy who, who got valuable minutes when Matt Nicholson went down he ended up starting our last six seven games I mean he's really improved as well so we feel like on the front court we have three guys on the front line that are experienced veteran guys that can play and but until you get in games you know I think everyone's going to sit up here and say we're 10 deep we're 11 deep and <laughs> but you know you get out there and, and you find out who can do it and you kind of see what your team evolves into. I do want to talk a bit about what you've built and you were alluding to it, talking about all the good games that you guys won, the amazing games you won at, at Walsh Ryan. I mean, that student section is fantastic. It rivals anyone in the conference right now. When you guys see that, you went 9-1 and one at home in the yeah. conference last year. Uh, to see where it's where it was and where it is now, what, what do you guys think about? Yeah, I think it just means the world to us. I mean, that's kind of really like our backbone at home. I mean, I think that every time that we step on the court, just just give us another push. I mean, we kind of look around and see that place sold out. I mean, it's almost you kind of almost want to get emotional to see where it's grown <laughs> and where we like kind of built it up to be. But uh, you know, we can't take like can't wait to take another step this year and get back in there uh, and kind of get going with those same fans again. 
Well, it starts early on with a huge home game in conference play December 6th against Illinois. What about from your opinion, Chris, when, when you think you've even got a, a lot more perspective than <laughs> yeah. these guys do, given how long now you've been in NU, what do you think about what it was when you got there and what it is now, what stands out to you? Yeah, it's it's awesome. I mean, it's special, you know, to think now. I mean, I can't believe I'm going into year 12, time flies, but to see where we were those first couple years and just fighting – for relevancy, respectability, you know, all those things. And now to come in and see that pack with purple, you know, and not other teams fans that live in Chicago. We we got a real home court and it, it mattered. You know, those nine wins at home, I, I really felt three, four, maybe even five of those wins. We don't win without the crowd. You know, they, they really put, you know, those last four minutes of the game in a tight game, your crowd can can help you win. And we need it. We need them to keep coming out and excited to get back in Welsh Rye and see what we can do this year. I'm going to wrap it up with this. I'm going to ask you to play prognosticator. So two years ago, we had you up here and we said, who's your breakout player going to be? And you said Brooks Barnheiser. <laughs> and it was Brooks Barnheiser. Last year, you had an interesting answer. You said, I know he's been around for a long time, but I really think Ty Berry is going to have a great year. And Ty was your leading, I mean, incredible three-point shooter, had the best scoring year of his career as well before the unfortunate injury. So you, you've got like this magic wand that you can just will it. You make it happen. Who's the player who's going to make the biggest jump this year? Nick Martinelli, you know, he's he's one of those guys, man, you just want him on your team. It, it may not look pretty all the time, but he's a ball player. He's a competitor. He's a winner. And he's now as a junior. Uh, I really expect him to, to be, you know, to step up and, and to be a real impact player in the Big Ten. I'm looking forward to seeing it. When you say it, it comes true. I hope so. <laughs> so we need it. All conference, Nick Martinelli. Here we come. Uh, Ty Brooks, really good to see you guys. Chris, always fun to yeah, see you as well. Well.